how to set and accomplish goals when you're on the autism spectrum. Hi friends, my name is Claire and this is my channel, Woodshed Theory. Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me. So if that sounds good to you or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button, ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos a few times a week, so click the like and the share. Now that the new year is here, we're in a time where many people like to sit down and decide what they'd like to accomplish for the year or set some goals. As a person on the autism spectrum who thrives on breaking things down and organizing things, I thought it would be helpful if I went through some tips that I have for setting goals and also achieving those goals. How to do that when you're on the autism spectrum, or maybe not, maybe this will help anybody, but this is how I figure out what I'd like to achieve and how I go about achieving those things. Just a reminder, I'm not a doctor. This is my own personal experience and what works for me. All people with autism are different. If you've met a person with autism, you've met one person with autism, as they say. I'm also not here to diagnose anybody. If you think that you might be on the autism spectrum and you're not sure, I would encourage you to do your own research and seek a medical opinion if that's something that you're interested in. The first thing I like to do when I'm trying to set some goals, either for the year or Maybe you're watching this outside of the new year and you're thinking, I, I wanna set some goals and I'm not sure where to start. The first thing that I like to do is basically word barf onto a piece of paper, everything that I can think of that I would like to accomplish. It doesn't have to follow any set of rules. You can do very basic goals that you have, desires that you have. It could be extremely granular or it could just be something that is way more general. Again, no rules, we're just getting our ideas set onto paper. If that seems way too general and way too overwhelming, I understand that. It also helps me to write down subcategories. For example, I might write down a category for personal goals, a category for my business or educational goals, maybe a category for my spiritual goals for the year. How about a category for finance, a category for relationships, putting it into broader sections so that I have a area to think about while I'm writing down my general goals for the year. I think it's a good time to mention that making goals does not have to be a stressful experience. This is really just a time for you to dream a little bit. Take a moment to consider what you would like your life to look like in the coming year or whenever. One of my goals for this next year, as far as relationships go, is to be more engaged in my friendships. As a late diagnosed autistic person, I didn't have very many friends, if at all, that were close friends of mine as an adult. Since my diagnosis, I've been able to build on the friendships that I've made so that there are closer relationships but I do know that one of the things I struggle with is being engaged in those relationships, being there for my friends, making sure that I'm checking in. So that's just a general goal that I have under that relationships category. After I've made that general list of goals and perhaps put it into some wider categories, personal, financial, education, relationships, etc., now is the time where we can start to get granular. The first thing you're going to want to do is take that general goal and then ask yourself, what does that look like? Especially in reference to yourself. The same goal is going to look different for different people. They're all going to be personal, even if they're the same goals. My becoming more engaged with friends is going to look different than your becoming more engaged with your friendships. So what does that look like for me? This is a great time if you're going to be writing down your goals to write down what that looks like for you. I wanna be more engaged with my friends. What does it mean for me? For me, it means that I wanna be in better contact with my friends. I want them to know that I'm there for them and I wanna feel like they're there for me. So at this point with a goal, 
I'm going to become more granular with that goal. And for me personally, I get extremely granular as goals go on because I want to know exactly how, and this is just how my artistic brain works, I want to be able to map out exactly how to accomplish something so that it becomes more of a reality for me and I know where I can take the first steps. So if I want to become more engaged with a friend, I understand that that means I'm going to have to reach out to them more often. I'll have to be in contact with them more often. I'll have to get closer to them more often. <laughs> that could look different for every friend, but let's just say one of your goals could be meet that friend in a social setting once a month. Meet them for coffee, have them come over to your house for coffee. I'm a coffee lover, so that's why I'm making that example. One of the things that I do to achieve this goal is to make sure that maybe at least once a week, I take time to sit down and text friends, people I haven't heard from from a while, reach out, ask how they're doing, and say hello. As a person who's on the spectrum, it can be difficult for me to remember to engage with people. So I know that as part of my goal, I need to be intentional, which is my theme word for the year. I'll talk about that in a minute. I need to be intentional in engaging in those relationships. So whatever I need to do to make that happen, I can write those things down and remember to do them. And all of those things are going to help me to be better engaged with my friends. Reaching out, spending time with them, asking them how they're doing, building the relationship by dot, dot, dot. These are all things that I could do to work towards that goal. What about getting granular in other areas? I already did a video this year on what my 2024 goals are going to be for my business. I love getting granular with business goals. It doesn't matter if I necessarily reach that goal exactly or not. It doesn't mean I'm a failure if I don't, but I like to know exactly what it's gonna take for me to reach those goals. So for example, one of the goals that I shared in that video was that I would like to reach 25,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Currently, I'm just over 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully I'll be looking back in a year and saying, wow, that was great, I did it. <laughs> we'll see. So 25,000 subscribers is a very big number. It's adding 15,000 more subscribers to my subscriber count in one year. Just having it be that general makes it seem impossible. I mean, maybe it is impossible, but I'm gonna try. So what I do instead is I make that goal as granular as possible. I walk back the goal to the very basics of basics of steps. So I did the math. I have it right here. If I want to add 15,000 new subscribers this year, that means I need to add 1,250 new subscribers a month. Currently, I'm adding between four and 500 a month. So there's the deficit that I have to make up for. Or, and this seems for some reason a lot more doable to me, I have to add 41 new subscribers a day. Walking it back and having actual numbers, that really helps me identify the goal in a better and more clear way. All right, so now we have the numbers. How do I know how to start working towards that goal? Well, in that last video, I talked about the things that I was going to do, my other goals that were gonna get me to that goal. So breaking it down, I can do a porch coffee video every week. I can commit to doing an autism video every week. Check mark, that's this video. I know that most of the traffic that I get to my channel that's new traffic comes from making YouTube shorts. So I can commit to doing four new YouTube shorts per week. I know that it's really important for me to engage with you, my community on YouTube. So something I could do to work towards my subscriber goal is to do one community post on my page per day. Another thing I can do to keep up that connection with my subscribers is to continue to answer all of the comments that I get. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that for much longer, but I'm going to try to do that because I know that that helps with gaining new subscribers and solidifying the relationships I have with existing subscribers. So I hope that clarifies that any goal that I have, I will back up 
to the first step. What does the first step look like? Because big goals are amalgamous. To me, it just doesn't work. I need a setup in my mind, a plan in my mind to be able to start moving forward on something or else I get super lost in the weeds and then I forget what I'm doing and I end up not getting anything accomplished. So that's how I set goals and how I keep myself on track towards succeeding in those goals. As an autistic person, I start off extremely general. I write all of those ideas down and then I take those goals and I chop them into tiny little teeny pieces that I can start doing something on. And eventually all of those little things turn into that big goal. If you're wondering how I get through my daily tasks, I do have a video on how to get stuff done as an autistic person and how I've become more successful in getting more things accomplished during the day. So definitely check that out uh, because I'll get more granular on how I get my day to day accomplished. Not that it has to be perfect and I don't always do it perfectly. It's just, my best case scenario advice for you. I almost forgot to talk about the theme word thing. One of the things I do every year to help me with my goals is to choose a theme word for the year. This isn't a requirement. None of these are rules. These are all just things that help me. So please don't feel like you need to do this. There are some years where I can't come up with a theme word for the year. But basically after I have put down all of my dreams and hopes and goals for the year, and figured that out, a lot of times a theme will emerge for me. So in the past, I've used the word grace. I have used the word present as in to be more present. And this year I chose the word intentional as in to be more intentional with my behaviors. I know that to make the goals happen that I wanna happen this year, I need to be much more intentional with what I'm doing. Since I've shared this bit of advice on my social medias, I've heard things like less, as in to say yes to less things, do less with the year. I've heard the word health, as in to put my health first for the year. Some great submissions came in and it's really helpful for me because even if I lose sight of all of my goals for the year, I can come back to my theme word and remember at least the direction that I'm trying to go in for the year. It kind of gives me a, a compass for the year, if that makes sense. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments or you have some tips about how you accomplish things. Uh, we would love to hear them in the comments. Anything you say is helpful to other neurodivergent people who are watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye friends. Oh, good luck with your goals. You got this.